Welcome to Six Months to Sarah. It's me, Sarah, in case you don't know by now, all of my three people watching. Oh, it's good. I hope you're having a great week so far. It is Thanksgiving week. Um, so I hope that we're like stopping to think what we're grateful for. Obviously, that's what Thanksgiving is for. Uh, if you don't have a big family, um, maybe you feel depressed around the holidays. Um, I get it. Like I don't have a really big family either. And um, sometimes it's easy to compare ourselves to what other people have, which is totally fair. And I kind of hate it when people say, well, you could be homeless. You could be, you know, uh, Bobby on the street selling crack for a pack of cigarettes. I'm like, yes, that is messy. It's probably not a good look for my thing, but you're right. Things could always be worse. And I think we need to remember that, especially in these times. And I think we need to remember that it's all relative because rich people have problems too. I think sometimes it's hard for us to be empathetic towards people that have money because we think they have it all figured out. Well, they don't. Why do you think a lot of celebrities and athletes and, and powerful people commit suicide or are drug um, addicts or, you know, have an alcohol problem? Because really they're trying to fill something that can't be filled with material things. And as soon as you get that message, learn that, you know, being a good person um, is more than having a lot of stuff yes money does make life easier I'm not gonna sit here and preach a poor mentality like I don't think any of us should want to strive to be poor to be a better person but just because you have money doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be better which brings me to my next topic about money okay say hi say hi I just don't wanna to go uh, money um, I've, I've spent a lot of time on my videos talking about emotional things, mental things, um, getting out of the wrong men, uh, men, that's another word, I should, men's sight, Freudian slip, right? Mindset, um, the process of change, and I'm quickly learning that six months is a very short amount of time to change my life, but if anything, it is definitely starting the wheels turning of a real change, and um, Sometimes I am very hard on myself and think I, oh, this was an idiotic um, thing to, to think I could change my life in six months. But honestly, if, if, if changing your, my life in six months just means changing my mental state and, and changing um, what I think I'm capable of, then that is a life change in six months. And I've like grown as a person, then I'm doing what I set out to do. So don't let anyone put you down if you're doing something like this or you decided to change your life and i had a i need to share something quickly before i get into this money talk i had um a friend really like an ex-boyfriend last night um tell me um that what i'm doing is stupid that nothing's going to change in six months that i don't you know sound like myself on my videos that um i mean just basically just like tearing down my whole thing like just like not and i was like you know i don't care what you think and you know what's great and you know what's i i honestly feel like i'm growing at least mentally and strong because i didn't care and this is someone that used to really affect what i thought about myself and get to me and um I didn't care. I was like, all right, well, that's your opinion. I'm not doing it for you. And I felt confident in saying that. And I realized in that moment that I am changing. Whether someone believes in what I'm doing or not, it doesn't matter because I'm not doing this for anyone but myself and my children and my life. So for once, I'm confident in what I'm doing because I didn't start this to impress somebody. I didn't start this because I cared what people thought. Yes, there's a, a, a could be a positive side effect of inspiring people, but with that comes criticism and I'm okay with that. If you think what I'm doing is silly, yes, I have 50 followers, guys. I know I don't have a million followers. I know that he's like, you have 50 followers and two likes. That's just dumb. And I was like, you know what, maybe one of those people are inspired, maybe one of those likes are inspired by what I'm doing. And if you could just make a difference in one person's life, you've done more than 50% of the world. So just like, <sighs> I was just like something I had to share because I think a lot of times we try to grow. We have our naysayers who come in and want to criticize what you're doing and think you're stupid and think you're silly. And that's okay, guys. Like any any great thing you want to do in life comes with criticism. So don't let that get to you like please like if you're doing something to change your life for the better whether, whether someone gets it or not isn't the point the point is that you're trying to do something to better yourself and your life so that is one thing I need to go on a tangent about I didn't want to make a whole video about it because it doesn't deserve a whole video but it needed to be mentioned I just talk about briefly today is money and it's kind of like it's a big topic but it has so many layers I might even need to make another one um about it but right now i need um, to so just... money money uh where do i start money is like the bad uh dysfunctional husband that i've had that i've like loved and hated at the same time no actually he's more he i guess money is a he <laughs> 
Money is more like an affair because it's scandalous and it's kind of wrong, but when I get it, I love it. I'm not have, don't have an affair and I've never had an affair. I've never even been married. I've never, whatever, but that's, I'm trying to compare it to something scandalous. Um, when I get money, I want to spend it on clothes and stuff and it makes me so happy in like 20 minutes and then after that, I'm like, what did I do that for? Or, or, or I want to do my hair. I want to do something like for my physical appearance to make me feel better. Um, money is something that have, I've never really had a lot of. So when I get it, I hold on to it like a little greedy monster. Like you're not gonna take my $10. Even though I've borrowed money from people and people have been generous to me, I, I'm i not that generous. I'm not even gonna sit here and lie to you guys. Like the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna be transparent. So, you know, since I have been struggling in survival mode my whole life, I've held on to money like it's something like illicit and oh, it's mine and nobody can know what I'm doing with my money. Like. When I get my tax return, you'd think that I would take it, save it, invest it, you know, do all, do all these things. What do I do? I, first thing I do is go to Target or the mall and blow like 500 bucks because I don't get to go on shopping sprees. And I, and I defend myself as saying, well, I don't have this kind of money ever. So I'm just going to, I think they call that a ghetto fabulous mentality. I'm not quoting, but it, that's how I feel in that moment. Cause I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't be spending $50 on soap right now, but I'm doing it. Cause the hashtag bougie right now even though I don't have any money to pay my rent but whatever that's besides the point so I've been frivolous with money a lot of times because it's something that I don't have a lot of that often so when I get it I feel like I need I deserve to treat myself instead of taking a vacation with my kids or instead of doing something meaningful like a lot of times I just I'll take my daughters out shopping and stuff or we'll go out to dinner but you know I'm not thinking long term I'm thinking very short term with money when I get a good amount of it I want to blow it and I and it's like crack I mean it's like I can't stop thinking about what I'm gonna buy you know it, it just it's it's been a theme in my life for a long time I've never thought about saving because I said well I can't save I'm just surviving how are you supposed to save when you're surviving the truth of the matter is I don't care who you are you can save five bucks a week even if it's five bucks a week I haven't done that part of my transformation I knew was money and finances and bills and planning and discipline and all the things that I hate those are all dirty words to me but they're things that need to happen and I also realized that um, money is not freedom for me it is very controlling to me it is money is the root of all evil that's a that's not true at all actually it's one of my least it's one of my pet peeves quoted in the Bible because or that people quote in the Bible because it's the root of all evil is the love of money. The love of money, what I'm doing with money, that's evil. I, I don't have a lot of it. I could have a lot of money and be responsible and be, you know, have control over it and it's not controlling me and that's not evil. But when I, you love money and you crave money, and you, you let it control you, you use it in the wrong ways, there's Violet. That is the root of all evil. And I, so the first step I feel, and I talked about a little bit in a short video I made on Instagram is sitting down and facing Facing the demon. <laughs> you guys, I am Sarah the Procrastinator Tchaikovsky, okay? Like, I'll have stuff due that comes in the mail. I'm like, I'm probably gonna, you know, like, I've had my uh, bank account garnished like three times from a credit card company. But if I just had opened the freaking mail and made and I called them instead of a payment arrangement, I've had two cars repossessed. I had a bankruptcy when I was 25 because I tried to save an apartment, not even for a huge debt. I had a bankruptcy because I was trying to not get evicted from an apartment. And then I got evicted anyways. It was one of the worst times of my life. I got evicted from this apartment. My credit was shot. I had me as I'm a go-getter. When I want something, even if I make a shit mess, I will clean it up and I will figure it out like I've done so many times in my life. The, part, the point is I don't want to do that anymore. I want to have a solid foundation where I'm not having to clean up the messes I've made because I haven't opened my mail. So, so a lot of times I've made excuses like, well, I'm a single mom, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It's so hard, it's so hard, but that's BS. And now it's time for me to sit down and face what I've done, the stuff that I have. I don't, the, the thing is, I don't even have a lot of debt. I have some stuff that's made my credit messed up, but I don't have a, a lot of debt and I don't have any credit cards right now because I don't pay them. I have like a couple ones I didn't pay. And I've just been super irresponsible with money and I have no one to blame but myself and my impulsion and you know that that's part of me uh, and my non-discipline has gotten me to where I am today now now I'm thinking long term I'm like listen I want to get a house I'm not even thinking about a husband I'm not even thinking I mean if he comes great 
I pray for every day my my future husband please be ready for me because I'm a handful you know like I pray every day for my future husband but I, right now in this moment I want to build a life with me and my girls apart from that I want I think about you know I believe in visualization I'm thinking about you know the house that I'm gonna have whether I'm renting it or buying it and it's gonna have a yard and it's gonna have a room for my two girls and me and it's gonna have you know a beautiful family feel behind a home that I want and things that I want to create for myself and my girls and that all starts with the first step like I said we're all in a 12-step recovery program I swear to gosh it's relevant for everything the first step is Facing it, <clears throat> admitting you have a problem, looking down, sitting down and realizing what you need to handle. If you are in debt right now and you are in denial and you're just letting things pile up and pile up, you're going to lose your house. You're going to lose, you know, whatever you're going to lose, you're going to lose it. So as hard as it's been for me, I have been sitting down and facing what I have to deal with. I have a new job now. I'm making good money. I have two jobs. Actually, I'm working my butt off, but I'm still like broke. broke. What is that? My accounts are in the negative. I have struggled to pay my bills since I've gotten this new job and I'm like, I'm working my butt off. I'm making so much money at this new job, but I'm not catching up. But in my mind, I'm calm because I know that I am, I have a plan. I've sat down and I've looked at what I need to make, what I need to pay and what I need to, to get there. And, and I don't need to go out and buy things to make myself happy. I haven't got my hair done. I, I haven't went shopping. There's a lot of things that I've sacrificed over the past couple months that would make me normally happy. And I've learned that I'm still okay without those things. I'm still okay without frivolously spending my money and that it's gonna give me so much more freedom to take my money that I start to make and to pay off my bills and to start to up my credit and to start to create a solid foundation and to start saving and all of those things slowly, even though I'm not there yet and I'm still kind of in the midst of the hardship, I can see it happening. And the first step I did was sit down and actually face it and get a grip on reality and say it is time for you to be responsible with your money it is time for you to grow up and stop spending your money on stuff that just makes you happy temporarily you are a mother of two daughters you are 37 years old it is time to grow up and be fiscally responsible it is time for me to start thinking long term about you know retirement about like a life I want to have when I'm older I don't want to struggle when I'm 80 years old I don't want to live you know paycheck to paycheck for the rest of my life and people not being a bartender like it's not a real job well I can tell you one thing people I make a lot more than people make at their real jobs and I'm not saying I want to do this forever but right now I'm a bartender and I'm gonna be the best bartender I can be and I'm gonna make the most money I can make and I'm gonna have the life that I've always wanted to have and I'm going to do it I'm not gonna wait for some guy to save me I'm not gonna wait for some magic wand to make everything better I am going to take ownership of my life starting now you can too the point is, is that I am right, I'm still in the midst of it. I'm not like, hey guys, I'm a self-made millionaire after 30 days. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm still scraping and struggling right now. I'm getting, I see the light, but I'm in the dark right now with money. It's like, hello, I, I'm working so much, I still can't even buy a pizza, but whatever. It's beside the point. The first step, like I say a million times, sit down, face what you have to face. Come to terms with what you've done with money. Don't make excuses like you deserve it or, you know, life has been hard or you're a single mom or you're a single dad or, you know, you want to feel good about yourself. You deserve it. Yes, you, we do deserve to treat ourselves well. But you know what? We deserve more than that to be financially free and to take ownership and accountability of what we've spent our money on. Don't let money control you. You control money. I am a victim of a poverty mentality since I was a little kid. And it's never too late to change. I truly believe that it's never too late to change how you think about everything. Start watching YouTube videos about how to handle your money. Take a college class on how to budget. I'm thinking about doing that myself, taking some classes on how to budget money because I never learned. And as you start to do that, you're gonna start to see financial freedom. You're gonna start to see a change and it's a slow change. It's so cliche, but you know, they say the, you know, slow and steady wins the race. So whether someone's putting you down or whether someone's saying you can't change you the way you are, you're this and that, let it go one ear out the other and just keep on doing what you're doing. If you Mommy. are making, yes, exactly. If you're doing positive things in your life, you're gonna see growth. You plant a seed, a tree doesn't grow overnight. A tree takes years to grow. You don't have to take years to grow, but just keep 
doing it. Face your fears, open that bill, do everything you need to do to take control of your life starting today. We're doing this together. I want to hear from you together, whether you have a little journey or a big journey or you want to whatever it is, we're all in this together and I'd love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe and share this. Um, it does help me and motivate me when I hear from you. And I will be back next week with a new message. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Please be grateful for what you have because as cliche as it is, there is always someone who has it worse. Guarantee you that. I'll talk to you soon. God bless.